always annoying when some uber-liberal, green-haired bucket of a feminist rants on and on about how women are paid less than men no matter how many times it's been proven to be false. It's kind of funny when their figures keep changing though, like is it 77 cents on the dollar or 67? It changes more than their hair colour, make your mind up, you know? But it's even more annoying when a company or organisation, the people who really should know better, also peddle the same shit. So LeanIn.org teamed up with Funny or Die, who are so desperate to be comedy that they took on this joke. Here we go. I am the most qualified candidate for the job because I am a real life businesswoman. Right, first off, that's meant to be a joke, right? It's a gag. It's a funny. But it's also fucking accurate. I'm the most qualified candidate for the job because I'm a businesswoman. All she offered was a gender and that should be enough, right? Fucking nailed it there without realising, I think. Okay, that's really stupid. You're damn right it's stupid, Grace, but that's the reasoning behind why we should have more female CEOs and world leaders. It's an argument so stupid that videos like this take the piss out of it without even meaning to. What? There's like 20% missing. Ah, because of the pay gap, you see? Oh, how clever. Could just be the printer though, those things are cunts. I remember in university, we had a strict deadline to turn in our essays. So on the day, everyone arrives to print out their stuff and all the fucking printers in the building stop working. True story that, they're absolute cunts. Girl, please be home. Hey. I should have 20%. Why are you dead? Oh, because of the pay gap again, see? Could be because it's an iPhone, though. Those batteries are cunts. Never mind this bin only had 20% of power. Why didn't you charge it overnight like the rest of us? Ah, uh, probably the pay gap. <sighs> oh, sorry. Here you go. Large dark roast for Carol. Well, the wage gap isn't hurting her too much if she can afford to piss away all her money on large dark roasts. It's black coffee, Carol. You can make it at home. Make an effort, you wench. This looks a little low. Large dark roast for Lucy. Uh, mine has even less. Oh shit, it's because she's black. And all driven home by being served by a white male in a shitty coffee job compared to Carol, who is in a medical profession, judging by her scrubs. Shouldn't be wearing those in an establishment that serves food or beverages, by the way, that's against health and safety. And Lucy, who looks like she might be spending a day off work being waited on by a white man who may be losing his shitty job soon because Carol couldn't be asked to change into her scrubs when she gets to the hospital. But it can't be racist because the person who made the coffee that you find so lacking is a fucking Asian woman. So, you know, blame her. Cool. Anthony, got a large dark roast. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, watch out. <laughs> so I actually quite like that bit. Like, the guy is so pleased. It's like he's never seen a full cup of coffee before. Could have done with a lid, though. Just saying, if Anthony spills that and burns himself, guess who's liable? Very hot and very full. Yeah, Anthony, you know why that is? It's not just the blend of Arabica beans, it's because you worked for that hot and full coffee, my man. You worked your overtime, you negotiated your salary, you didn't take maternity leave, you didn't go on strike on March 8th, and you don't blame everything that doesn't benefit you on the ubiquitous patriarchy. Enjoy that hot and full coffee, Anthony. You've earned it. Hey, I'm gonna clock out. Cool. Yeah, cool. You've been fucking up the drinks all day, woman. The only reason you're on that station is because you're too fucking miserable to deal with the customers. At least the simpleton behind the counter smiles at people, fucking pissy bitch. And you really can't go on about not getting paid enough when you finish early in a job that pays by the hour. Fucking typical. Oh, are you done? Oh, yeah. Could you just make it even? Oh, because of the pay gap, you see? Absolutely no change to her hair, though, besides that long strand there brushed down from the top. And it was a woman who did it, so it's not sexist. Maybe this is karma for being such a prick on the drink station, you know? It looks even to me. It looks like a mouse is just slowly, like slowly falling. A mouse in your hair would be yet another violation of health and safety. This bitch is just fucking up lives wherever she goes. You know, can't you just be happy with what you have? I cut most of your hair. Uh, am I crazy? 
You're not crazy. You are? You work in a coffee shop and you spend money on someone doing nothing to your hair. In fact, you clocked off early for it. You're fucking mental. This is crazy. Yeah, until it becomes mainstream fashion. Then you'll be giving it the I had it first, won't you? Even with all the last two sections, you're certainly more than qualified. We'd love for you to join our team. <laughs> oh shit, nailed the interview with only 80% of your CV. Well done, Grace. That bit would normally be references though, so he's giving you the job without asking for proof of previous employment. I call sexism. If he had the contact details of your last job, he'd find out you got fired over going on strike on International Women's Day. And we think you'll be pleased with the offer that we gave someone else. Ah ha ha, psych! You'll be making 20% less. Mm. Start on Monday. Mm. Well, that's what you get when you only give him 80% of your CV, you stupid bitch. He didn't specify he gave it to a man, though, did he? Just someone else. Could be for any reason, really. They negotiated their pay. They were headhunted from another company. They sucked his dick. Anything. Right, so here's the bit. 20% less than men. Not for doing the same job, just 20% less than men. Then black and Hispanic women, even more than 20%. Again, not for the same jobs, just in general. Because if they show the stats for pay across the same jobs, there wouldn't be an issue, would there? They'd just be like, ah, oh, we've been complaining about nothing all this time. But these people are in far too deep for that. Here's how they like to put it. Because everyone likes a pie chart and they couldn't even do that for us. It's a Nice visual to ensure you don't get distracted by any actual facts floating around. And then we get the pay gap between races, or rather, black and Hispanic women and white men. Ooh, where's the black and Hispanic men? Doesn't fit the narrative, I bet. And when did this become about white men? I know it's a stereotype, but what do you think of when someone says Hispanic woman and employment? Because I think house cleaner. Nothing wrong with that. I've been a cleaner in my time. It's a noble profession. But that isn't going to pay as well as, say, being an astronaut, is it? Now, off the top of your head, how many female Hispanic astronauts do you know of? They even present the actual facts in such a way that makes it seem even more unfair. Here we have their representation of the earnings gap, which is the genuine one, the real one. There is disparity between the earnings of males and females down to them taking different jobs. When it has been stated many times that there aren't many women in STEM fields in comparison to men, and then we have this diagram here showing us there aren't as many women in highly paid jobs as there are men, the conclusion isn't, well then I'm gonna study like a motherfucker and get one of those highly paid jobs. No, it's actually society is to blame. Here we have an actual diagram showing they have no one to blame but themselves. Earnings gap, not wage gap, but it's still wrapped in the guise of women aren't paid as much as men. So, pretending they are correct and women are actually being paid less than men, what can a company do to ensure they earn the same for the same job? Well, we've got some pointers on how to run a company from a group of people who clearly don't understand what numbers mean. Number one. Conduct a pay audit. Awareness is the first step to solving a problem. Analyze compensation by gender and race so you can see and address pay gaps. In addition, be explicit on how your organization determines compensation so employees don't have to guess what factors are driving their pay. So in other words, check your books, see that people are being paid according to position and not gender, then sit back in your leather chair, look out your window at the beautiful vista your corner office offers and smoke a cigar. Safe in the knowledge that you aren't getting sued because paying one gender less than the other is illegal. Number two. Ensure that hiring and promotions are fair. Audit reviews and promotions regularly to ensure your company is not systematically rating men more highly and promoting them more quickly. Train managers so they understand the impact of gender bias on their decision making and put clear and consistent criteria in place to reduce bias in staffing decisions and performance reviews. Look, if you're hiring and promoting based on gender and not ability, your company isn't going to last long, is it? Promotions come along because you're beneficial to that company. Nothing more. It's a business. They only care about making money, not giving people a leg up. 
Number three. Make sure women have equal opportunity for advancement. Women typically receive less feedback on their performance, get fewer high-profile assignments, and have less access to mentorship and sponsorship. Make sure the women in your organization have equal access to the people and opportunities that accelerate careers and are not saddled with a disproportionate amount of office housework, such as organizing events. Women typically go off to have families, rendering them only as reliable as their youngest child's ability to spend the whole day in school. Family and career don't really mix well, and it's really difficult to fire someone, so yeah, office housework. Not all women, obviously, as shown by the few that hold high-profile positions and make some serious bank. Which also shows the opportunities are equal, or there wouldn't be any women in the boardroom at all, would there? And number four. Make it a norm for women to negotiate. We expect women to be giving and collaborative, so when they advocate for themselves, we often see them unfavorably. This social pushback can negatively affect the results of women's negotiations and their careers. Make sure the women in your organization are encouraged to negotiate and applauded, not penalized when they do. You do realize you have to be fucking good at your job in order to successfully renegotiate your pay, don't you? It's not based on how long you've been working there or that you bring cakes in every Wednesday. You have to show you deserve to be paid more than you already are. And a company is only going to agree to that if you're an asset to them. They don't increase pay lightly. So why the fuck would they encourage people to attempt it? That would be a massive waste of time and money. Two things greatly valued in business. The people pushing this narrative have no idea how how much they're making women look like weak, frail creatures who need help at every corner. And that's not the case for all women, just feminists. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm spreading my roots out a bit and uploading to Daily Motion and VidMe just in case this channel gets shut down, which, let's face it, could happen any day. So make sure you find me over there. Please consider becoming a patron to support this channel. And remember, calling your boss a misogynist is a sure way to get promoted.